as the Sanctuary Cross. And if you came here to the entrance and got in as far as here and got into this cross, well, you, you didn't get past it, I think, without making a few promises if you were on the run. But if you were on the run and got here to this cross and were prepared to promise to amend your life, um, you were allowed into the monastery and basically you had the sanctuary of the monastery. So I believe if you were guilty of murder, if it was proved that you were guilty of murder rather than guilty of accidental death, uh, then you had to go back out and face, face the consequences. Uh, but otherwise, you were allowed into the, mo uh, the monastery. I think you might have had to get down on your knees. I think you might have had to confess your sins. I'm not sure, but you might have had to place your hand in the Bible. But uh, anyway, uh, basically here at this spot, Uh, basically here at this spot was the spot where you gained the sanctuary of uh, the, the monastery. And so let us just think for a, for a moment of people who maybe at this very spot promised to change their lives. But here at this spot people amended their lives. And some of them it is believed to so amended their lives that they later on uh, ask for admission into the monastery as a, as a monk, not just as a worker. Um, there was what we would have, could call today community service for, uh, for those found guilty uh, when you come in from this spot. You are given work to do. And uh, if after a certain period, maybe a year, whatever, ten months, uh, you are seen to be amending your life, then you are offered admittance if you wish to enter the monastery uh, to be a monk. But let's just pray. First of all, that for ourselves coming in here, that we too may receive the grace to walk with the Lord. But also we pray that something that is sacred in this spot, where people have mended our lives, that something that's sacred in this spot may embrace the whole of chorus who come in here, that they too may be touched by something of God's grace in these sacred buildings. And I invite you to think perhaps of somebody you would like to see change their life, reform their life, and we just hold them before God to the intercession of Saint Kevin. For the sake of his sorrowful passion and for the intercession of Saint Kevin and all the saints of Vendelov, have mercy on us. But there would be no getting into it. How many stories do you think there is in it? Seven. Now, why do you think there would be seven in it? Seven is a holy number. How many pilgrimage churches are there in Rome? How many churches? Uh, would, how many churches did they speak about in Glendalough? Even even at times when they were nine or ten, there was the seven churches of Glendalough. <laughs> how many churches did they speak about being in Clonmacnoise? And one part of Arden Island, where even though the whole island was covered with churches, the speak of one particular area that being the, 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 the seven churches. So, um, why do they speak of seven? Uh, two reasons. One, that the biblical number of fulfilment, but also uh, it is uh, would be in a sort of the done thing uh, to pray at seven points seven, in seven churches when you came when you came to Zendelok. How many days did you walk around the walls of Jericho? How many times? in Glendalough. As far as possible, they do try to keep a record of all the people that have been buried here. But as I said, people have been buried here since the 13th century, so there's an awful lot of unmarked graves. You've probably walked across a couple of dead people already, to be honest, since entering the central enclosure. I'll be showing you the more modern element of the graveyard very shortly, where people have been buried in more recent times. The most exciting building here has to be our round tower. It's one of 64 round towers in Ireland. It's 35 metres high. At the top there you can see a large window. There's actually four of those and they face the four cardinal compass points, north, south, east and west. Above that again you can see a conical or a pointed roof. And if you look closely above that you can see something protruding from the top of the roof. You might be wondering what that is. It's not that the monks had cable or satellite. <laughs> It is, of course, a lightning rod. <laughs> this tower was struck by lightning in 1818. Sadly, an awful lot of the roof was damaged. It was rebuilt in 1878 
using as much of the original stones as possible. And a little lightning rod is on top purely to prevent that from ever happening again. Now what was the purpose of a round tower? For centuries, right up until when I was in school, which was around the time of Cromwell and Hayes, <laughs> we all thought that the purpose of this building was that it was a place to hide, to seek refuge. And what gave weight to this theory was that in every tower in Ireland, the door, as you can see, is about four metres from the ground. Now here we go blaming my Viking cousins again. Supposedly the Vikings would come down the valley, they would see a monastery, their eyes would light up, they'd get very excited because, let's face it folks, a monastery in those days was a bit like a bank. Mm -hmm. And any Viking worth his salt was going to do a spot of plundering in the village. The idea is that the monks would gather up all their treasures and valuables, run up a little ladder in that door, pull the ladder up, and they were safe from the Vikings. It's all very exciting. It's a total myth. <laughs> I'm afraid it's not true. Like everything, the truth is stranger than fiction. Anyway, it simply was a bell tower. A bit dull, not as exciting as the Viking story, I'm afraid. It had seven wooden floors, okay? It never had a spiral staircase. I'm sorry, but Rapunzel never stayed here. <laughs> the top floor had a bell, a wrought iron bell. The idea is that a monk would hit the bell with a stick, and would let all the monks working in the outlying enclosure that it was time to return after a long day working in the farms and the fields. There was also something symbolic about the tower. It was a link between man and earth, reaching up to God in heaven. They were landmarks for pilgrims because the tower could be seen from many kilometers away, telling them they were reaching the end of their pilgrimage. But most of all, these towers were simply status symbols of wealth and power. They were making a statement. They were saying, look at us. Look how important we are in our great center of culture and learning. So if it was just that, a bell tower, a practical building, why do you think is the door so high? Every monastery, it's the same. Very good, a lot of rain in Ireland, but we don't get that much. <laughs> but again, I've heard that theory before, so no problem, absolutely flooding. Maybe uh, anyone else? Nothing to do with animals. Animals, keep out the animals, you know, those killer sheep. <laughs> <laughs> what we think is that the monks were rather clever people. You see, the foundations are very shallow, very uh, not very deep at all. Very, all this granite, very hard to dig into. So the foundations are only about a metre deep. So the monks deliberately placed their door high, and from the door down, they filled it in with stone, soil, anything they could get their hands in to give weight to the building, to lend it balance, to stabilize the structure, to prevent it from falling over. And they were right, because a thousand years later, it's still standing today. So from the door down, it's all filled in solid. And then from the top, from the door up, we've got the different stories to the seventh floor with the bell tower. In every monastery in Ireland, the door faces the most important building, which is the cathedral. So we're going to head on down there very shortly. There are many colourful stories. Frost on the inside and make a wish if you should decide to do it. Now what I want all you to do is you see the little church in front of you there. That's St. Kevin's Church down there. And that church was only opened a few years back when we had our first woman president here in the Irish Republic, President Mary Robinson. At the back of the church, there's a little footbridge of cloth. And what it does is and up along the lake that I showed you.